Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and this is part two of my reply to the CRTC's Memorandum of Fact and Law, where they explained that the Rogers Cablevision TV moderator had the right to exclude me from the debate for any reason they wanted. CRTC, paragraph 12. As a result of these considerations, the Commission determined that Rogers did not breach subsection 27.4 of the broadcasting regulations, and accordingly dismissed the applicant's complaint. So I say paragraph 10, oh, they continue, paragraph 10.1e of the Broadcasting Act empowers the Commission to make regulations respecting the proportion of time that may be devoted to broadcasting of programs, including advertisements or announcements of a partisan political character and the assignment of that time on an equitable basis to political parties and candidates. And once, now this is what I'm saying, and now once the Ontario Court of Appeal had ruled that the present regulations did not ensure that the time devoted to broadcasting of programs of a partisan political character was shared on an equitable basis by political parties and candidates, the Commission is, cor is correct in mentioning that the Broadcasting Act empowers it to make better regulations to affect the intent that the time devoted to broadcasting of programs of a partisan political character was shared on an equitable basis by all political parties and rival candidates. Of course, it doesn't help that in the 1990s and 90s, the legislation said all rival parties and candidates. Applicant doubts that Parliament dropped the word all and suggests that the Commission chose to omit it in their policy statement. Of course, if Parliament has dropped the all from the all candidates, then that explains why the Ontario Court of Appeal would rule that the media can now exclude any candidate they want from debates, since they don't have to have them on at all. But applicant alleges that it is an omission of the word by the Commission, and not a deletion in the statute by Parliament. If Parliament did remove the all, I'm asking this court to order them to put it back in. Issue number five. And CRTC paragraph 14, under this provision, the Commission has enacted several regulations requiring that during an election, broadcasters allocate time for broadcasting programs, advertisements, or announcements or a of a political partisan character on an equitable basis to accredited political parties and rival candidates in the election. 15, they say on September the 2nd, the Commission issued a policy with respect to election campaign broadcasting, Notice 1998-142. The public notice set out the Commission's position regarding various aspects of election period broadcasting. With respect to debate programs held during an election, the Commission noted that it may be impractical to include all rival parties and candidates in one program. However, the Commission stated that if this type of broadcast takes place, all parties and rival candidates should be a accommodated, even if doing so requires that more than one program be broadcast. Well, I will accept this commission statement as the rationale for why I asked that I be accommodated after the event in obtaining an equitable share of the broadcast pie, even if doing so required that more than one program be broadcast or appended. COTC 16. On 15th of March, the Commission issued Public Notice 1995-44 which revised its policy set out in 1988-142 with respect to election debate programs. The Commission noted that the Ontario Court of Appeal had ruled in R versus CBC that debates were not covered by the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time during an election period. And I answer the Commission to ensure democratic election broadcasting is peddling this judicial rationalization for why election broadcasts do not have to be shared equitably among all rival political candidates anymore. Yet, it has the duty to come up with regulations that work and to supervise that democracy works, not accept a court ruling rationalizing candidate exclusion as still being democratic. The CRTC is not limited by the, con the court's contradictory decision on its first bad efforts to ensure democracy and can always try to make a better policy a second time. That's why I'm challenging not only the Ontario Court of Appeal ruling that debates featuring partisan political opinions are not partisan political programming, issue 6, but also that the CRTC is not limited by it and can enact new regulations trying to be more effective at ensuring democracy again. 
After all, sharing a pie isn't such a complicated deal. Issue 7. CRTC, in light of this decision, the Commission stated that it would no longer require that debate programs feature all rival parties and candidates in one or more programs. And there it is. CRTC says that debates don't have to have all candidates anymore in Canada because the court said so, rather than change the regulations to ensure that it be done right. 27. So instead of issuing new regulations so the debate programs feature all rival candidates, again, the Commission makes it official by accepting the court ruling that excluding candidates from debates is still democratic, a complete dereliction of the duty to regulate the democratic integrity of our election broadcasting. CRTC 21. The applicant has failed to point to an error in law or jurisdiction made by the Commission in the decision. The applicant's argument that Rogers did not have sufficient justification to remove him from the election debate program is premised on the notion that he was entitled to an equitable share in the debate program pursuant to Section 27.4. However, in the decision, the Commission reiterated that Section 24.7 does not apply to debate programs because they are not programs of a partisan political character. The Commission notes that the application does not seek to con test this conclusion. Well, I said applicant notes that there is now no choice but to. CRTC, because they never brought up the CBC before now, right? Now I gotta answer it. CRTC, as such, the applicant's argument about the sufficiency of Rogers' reasons for rejecting him from the debate and does not point to an error of law or jurisdiction by the commission. Well, after I had obeyed, Rogers did not have valid reasons for rejecting me from the debate. I challenge this because the CRTC has stated I must obey any rules the ruler makes up. And I say the organizer's control does not extend to candidates' promotional materials. Issue 1. CRTC, furthermore, in determining that section, subsection 27.4 does not apply to election debate programs, the Commission was merely following existing judicial precedent as well as its own public notices. So the Commission, they say, is not bound to follow the existing judicial precedent, denying all candidates an equitable share of the time, when it has the power to re-regulate new rules, so the media share out the time pie democratically. So the CRTC are saying, the judges said we can, the media can cheat the people, and because they said media can cheat, we put out policy that says media can cheat. CRTC, paragraph 23. In our versus CBC, the Ontario Court of Appeal established clearly that election debates do not constitute programs of partisan political character within the meaning of the Commission's regulations since they represent a number of political viewpoints. Answer. Applicant could agree had the court said since they represent all different political viewpoints. Of course, debates with partisan political opinions from all candidates do not exert unfair partisan political influence, but debates with only some candidates, a number of candidates, do exert unfair influence and cannot be said to not be of partisan political character. 36. CRTC. The court stated that while statements by each of the participants are undoubtedly partisan, the program itself is clearly not. Clearly a judge. <laughs> well, this is only true when all different political viewpoints are presented. Sadly, this seems typical of judicial thinking. Since debate programs with all candidates are not unfair, debate programs without all candidates aren't unfair either. CRTC 24. As a result of the Ontario Court of Appeals decision, the Commission issued Public Notice 1995-44, which stated it would no longer require that debate programs feature rival parties and candidates in one or more programs. So, rather than issue new regulations, so debate programs feature all rival parties and candidates in one or more programs, the Commission remains derelict in accepting that debate programs no longer feature all rival parties and candidates in one or more programs. The Commission accepting undemocratic exclusions because of a contradictory court ruling when it has the power to re-regulate a fair debate is a dereliction of the Commission's duty to regulate and ensure democratic allocation of broadcast time. Sure, the courts may have ordered that elections debates be unfair, 
but it's still the Commission's duty to get around such flawed decisions to ensure the election debates be fair. The Commission has the responsibility to ensure democratic fairness and to say it cannot because the courts have ordered that debates be unfair is silly when they can write new policy to get around the court's corruption of the democratic integrity of the Canadian election process. They have the power to compel the media to be fair and that they rely on an irrational court judgment to thwart their own mission says it all, the ultimate dereliction of duty, looking for a way not to do it. On all grounds, the applicant seeks leave to appeal the decision of the Commission ruling that the equitableness subsection 27.4 does not apply to debate programs because they are not programs of a partisan political character. Dated at Brantford on Monday, June 15, 2009, John C. Termel, applicant.